I'm Andrea. I'm the owner and founder of Lororegese.com. We've been dealing with vintage watches for uh, over 20 years and have been buying watches as a collector for many years more. So with this video, we're going to start looking at certain specific watches. It would be one watch at a time. We'll be taking it apart and seeing what makes it interesting, what makes it original, why it is a rare watch, and it will help you uh, if you want to buy a similar watch in the future to, uh, to have a, a very in-depth view and comparison of the timepiece. Today, we're going to start with this Omega. It's a British military watch, reference 2292. It's been issued to the uh, Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm and uh, it is a Battle of Britain watch. So we'll be taking a close look at it, taking it apart and seeing why it is rare and interesting and why we bought it. So next time you can also buy like a professional. All right. This is an Omega reference 2292. The letter code should be UK because this is not the steel model, but it's a, uh, a Dura Aluminum model. It is a uh, British Battle of Britain watch. Its uh, manufacture date should have been should be the early 1940s, and uh, it is quite a rare watch. So now we'll be looking at why it is quite a rare watch, what makes it interesting and we'll be taking it apart so that we can see how it's made inside and how we can determine its originality and the fact that it is untouched. So let's start from the outside. This is, the, the watch style is quite classic. It is a mid-size 32 and a half millimeter watch and it has a very legible and plain dial and very characteristic pear shape with center second hands. This is blue steel. And so while it looks unconspicuous, it has some very interesting peculiarities. So to start, the design of the case is somehow unusual because it has long and thin lugs, which in principle would not be you know very common for a military issue watch and then if you look at the case you will see that the color is slightly different and also the feel because this is not a steel case but this is a yeah it's a called dur aluminum it is an uh, aluminum alloy made of aluminum copper, magnesium, and manganese. And um, the back is steel. You can see the issue marks. We'll look at this in a minute. And so it is not exactly clear why this alloy was developed. Because some say that it was developed because um, steel was rare, it was used for armaments. But this doesn't, it doesn't really sound because for one thing, Switzerland was not involved in major armament manufacturing. And also, we have to remember that steel is you know, bought by the ton and just a few grams are used in watches. So it's unlikely that just steel was not available to make watches. It is also said that they developed this alloy because it had less of a glare, and so uh, it was uh, more un more inconspicuous on a pilot's watch. But this is also you know, hard to believe because uh, the watch is small; it was worn inside the cockpit, and most likely under a flight jacket. So the possible reason is that Omega was doing a research on innovative materials, and they developed this alloy. Uh, as, as something new and different and you know this seems to me 
the most likely of possibilities. But if anybody has a specific information of this, I'd be happy to hear it. Now, if we look at the back of the watch, we can turn it and see it has some markings on the back. It has H, H S, 8, and this is the uh, arrowhead, which is a stamp which identifies all military issue uh, material and the serial number 10316 so it is quite high for this watch and Bravingtons now let's see hydrographic service indicates the uh, Royal Navy fleet air arm so these were pilots fighting uh, starting uh, their flight originally either from ship or from land but they were mostly concerned with defense of Royal Navy properties. Eight is the code that indicates wristwatch. Again, this is the serial number, and 10,316 is in the higher range. And then we have this Bravingtons. Uh, this was a um, surplus dealer. So what is likely is that this watch was commissioned because we have issue marks and it was then decommissioned and sold to the general public through Bravingtons. Uh, now these watches, they also come with different issue marks, that is with the 6B Royal Air Force markings, which is much more common than the HS8. And also occasionally you do find the watches which have no issue marks and so likely they were sold to the civilian market. The overall production run of reference 2292 should be in the range of 3000 pieces and um, apparently not many were issued to the uh, HS8. Now, one other peculiarity of this watch is that the case being made of uh, this alloy, it is not as hard wearing as steel. This is also, you know, the lug design, the lugs are quite thin and long and, and, the, and the alloy proved to be a little less resilient than steel. And so many of the watches you find today either have the lugs broken off and then redrilled with the spring bars. These are the original metal bars to this watch and uh, or you find them with case which are severely damaged from wear or just you know these watches you know sometimes they must have seen some very challenging situations. Now this is the crown as you see it is uh, unbranded, it has no logo, it is steel with larger teeth and it is slightly domed and this is also the original crown to this watch. Okay so now let's start taking the dial off, sorry taking the bezel off, okay. let's remove it, it is an aluminum bezel it snaps off quite sharp. Now we look at the dial. This is a non-luminous dial, so it has no luminescent material. It has a very characteristic design with the minute close rail outside, the Swiss made, so this was a Swiss dial, not a military of defense dial. It has typically this off-white color and steel dark blue hands with, with a classic uh, pear-shaped hour hand and a little bevel tail uh, second hand. This is the original set of hands that came uh, for this watch and also there are 
in very good condition. There's no oxidations, no tarnishing, and the bluing still has this intense deep color. Next, I'm going to uh, remove the case back. I've already leveraged it open, so we can take a look at the inside of the watch. Let's start looking at the case back. Okay, so this is steel. It's the only steel part of the watch case. This is the 2292. This is the uh, reference number. And here this is the classic Omega logo inscribed in a triangle. It says uh, Fab Suisse, Swiss made. And here it says Fond Acier Inoxidable. That means stainless steel bag. And this is the classic, this is the designation for watches with a um, steel case back and a different alloy body. It could be base metal or aluminum, as in the case of this watch, or uh, uh, it's just you know, non steel cases. Then we can take a look at the movement. Okay, it's in focus. This is one of Omega's workhorses, but it's a, it's a very good quality movement. It's caliber 30 T2 uh, and SC. SC stands for Second Central, Center Seconds. In fact, you can see here the drivetrain and the, the, the pignon for the Center Seconds. And the serial number for this movement is 9.9 .9 million. So this would date it to the period 1939-1943, which is correct for this watch. And uh, now I'll also be taking the movement out, so we can look at some details about the movement and then about the dial, the dial back in particular, which will give us some information. So here is one of the first watch retaining screws. And yeah. So now it's the, the crown to be removed, the turn of the crown. Here it is. Okay. It's come off. We'll take a look at the crown in a second. And this is this, the last movement holding craze screw. Okay, and now the movement will just pop out. Take it out without touching the dial. Okay. So let's start looking at the case. Okay, it's aluminum. It is much lighter than steel, and it has a small tube for the crown. And if you look at the crown, you will see it has. A recess in it which is just the same size as the tube. See the crown? So it's made like this so that it fits perfectly. See in see better here so that it fits perfectly in the tube. It has very little you know leeway and you can see it is just made for it. This is one thing which indicates that this is the original crown. Also I know from experience this is the original crown. But aside, you know, if you're not sure, the fit can give you some indication. Okay, so now let's move the case. OK. 
Okay, we've seen the dial and the hands, and uh, I will now remove the hands. So we start with this little protection so that the hand remover doesn't touch the dial. And here we go. One hand. We can help lifting the hands with this little tool. Okay. Here. Okay, so we have the hands. And now we can remove the dial. It has two retaining screws. One. And the second one is on the opposite side. And we can gently lift the dial up without touching it except on the side, okay, it, it come off, it comes off quite easily, it's better not forcing it. Okay, this is the movement, it does not tell us much, except that it is in very good condition, it has no oxidations or uh, stains or anything. But now let's look at the dial. Okay, let's put it so that it is. Okay. Now, if you look at the back of the dial, it is, you know, it has no writings, which are typical of refinished dials and the feet are untouched and the deck surface is also untouched and you can see here I will bring it closer to the camera so you can see it has it says Lemerich Swiss and the serial number and let's see if okay uh, maybe you can see it better Lemerich is the dial maker so that's his signature Okay, and this is the dial from the front. Just a quick look at the movement. We've seen the serial number, and what's interesting is the quality of the uh, balance wheel. I'll try to stop it so that no okay this is a bimetallic balance wheel with adjustment screws and a breguet spiral on the movement so it means it's a little more more delicate if the watch folds particularly on the case side on a hard surface because the balance could break the balance axe could could, uh, could could break more easily but aside from the rest it is in uh, very good condition and it is a very very good quality workhorse movement from Omega they've made it for many years and this is the base on which they developed future 1960s and 1950s calibers. So I hope you'll find this short video interesting and with the, the right information that you need to uh, buy this kind of watch. And here is the last view of the watch semi-disassembled in that the movement is still in one piece but it is stripped down
to its main components. Any comments will be welcome and we'll be back soon with another video on another interesting and unusual watch. Thank you.